Hello, my name is Esther Wojcicki. I'm speaking to you here from Silicon Valley. I live on the Stanford University campus. Uh, one of the things that I'm the most excited and passionate about is innovation. Uh, innovation is really the future of the planet. Um, if we don't have innovation, if we don't give students or young people the opportunity to innovate, then we are not going to have a very good future for the planet. Uh, so my, my number one goal is to empower students to believe in themselves. And when you believe in yourself, and when you have some ideas that you think might make the world a better place, then I think that that represents hope to me. So I'm going to talk to you today about the power of believing in yourself. And it sounds like it's not the most important topic, but in fact, I think it's the most important topic. And I'll just tell you a little bit about who I am. I am the 2002 California Teacher of the Year, so that was about 20 years ago. I'm the founder of Palo Alto High School Media Arts Program. Uh, I'm a pioneer in using computers in education. I first started using computers in education in 1985, which is a really long time ago. Um, I'm the co-founder of one of the largest journalism um, outreach programs called Journalistic Learning Initiative at the University of Oregon. I have three honorary doctorate degrees and I'm the former chair of Creative Commons and I'm still on the board and creativecommons.org, you might wanna look it up. Um, Creative Commons believes in allowing people to share, share their intellectual property so we can all work better and be more collaborative. So my title, just for you to know, is the Godmother of Silicon Valley. I don't know who gave me this title, but um, I think it was probably my a group of my former students because so many of them became very successful. I'm also the mother of a super family, which I'll tell you a little bit about. I wrote this first book of mine called Moonshots in Education and came out in 2015. It was targeting teachers because my goal was, how can we change the education system? How can we make teachers more effective in the classroom? It sold pretty well. I think there were about 20,000 copies of the, the book and it continues to sell. Uh, this is my second book. It's called How to Raise Successful People, Simple Lessons for Radical Results. And this became a really big uh, seller it was translated into 21 languages a year ago, and today it's in 31 languages. And so I'm really excited that people all over the world are gonna be able to understand what it takes to be innovative, what it takes to be a good teacher, and how to change the classroom, as well as parent, how to change parenting. So this is a little summary of what's in the book. The main principle in the book is trick. And it stands for trust, respect, independence, collaboration, and kindness. I put it together in this little word, trick, because I wanted to help people remember it. Most people, when they read a book, they actually forget what they read at the beginning of the book by the time they get to the end of the book. So this is to help you remember it all the time. So the goal of my pedagogy is empowerment and innovation. These are my three daughters. Uh, when we lived in Geneva, Switzerland, Susan, Janet, and Anne. Here they are today, Susan, Janet, and Anne. Susan is wearing blue. Janet is the one with red. And this is what they do. Susan is the former CEO of YouTube. And she uh, is the one that bought YouTube for Google. And she has quite an interesting history. Today, she works on the self-driving car uh, she stepped down about six months ago as the YouTube CEO, just because of the amount of work that it was requiring. This is my second daughter, Janet, who's a professor of pediatrics at UCSF Medical School. And she's focused on doing something about the obesity epidemic, which is worldwide. It isn't just in the US, although the US seems to have the largest problem. Um, 
and there, I think I skipped one. This is my daughter, Anne, um, who is the, my third daughter, founder of 23andMe, the largest personal genetics company. So people often ask me, like, what did you do to your daughters? How, how did they all become so successful? And honestly, the answer is the same thing that I'm going to be telling you today. I always gave them the power of believing in themselves. And I just thought to tell you, this is one thing that happened in Susan's life and actually our, all of our lives. Um, Google, the garage, was this is my daughter's house. Started in her house in 1998. And it happened because Susan bought the house with her husband. She just got married and they needed extra money to be able to pay for the mortgage. And so they looked around for someone to rent their garage and they met and it was purely coincidental by accident, Larry and Sergey. And that was the beginning of Google. And this is what the garage looks like. That was actually before they moved in. And of course they moved in with a lot of their computers. And this is, they also rented three bedrooms and two bathrooms. And this is what one of the bedrooms looked like. There were computers everywhere. Actually, in some of the other rooms, there were even more computers. So my pedagogy, as I said, is to empower students. And I did this by building the largest student media program in the world. It started in 1984 in this small room. And it started with 20 students on a typewriter using X-Acto knives to cut out their stories and hot wax to paste it up. And today, 2023, this is what the, pro the program looks like. There are 800 students in this pro program today, 12 publications, and the publications include newspaper, television, podcasts, magazines, graphic design, and photography. So I use these publications to give students the opportunity to believe in themselves. They come up with their own ideas for the stories, they work together in teams, and they produce these publications. This is just one of them. This is the newspaper. It is the first, the front page of the paper. It's the size of the New York Times. It comes out in between 24 to 28 pages every three weeks and um, three different sections in the paper. It's all done by students. This is another one of the magazines. This is 80 page magazine. The publications have won gold or silver crowns from Columbia. That's the top of the nation, United States for the past 30 years. Here's another magazine, all created by students. So what, what's the purpose of this? Why am I teaching them this? Because by writing your own opinions and doing your own layout and design and working together in teams, you learn how to believe in your own ideas. This is what the building looks like inside. Here's one of the classes, that's me in the red jacket. And the classes are, are all very big. This one has got 70 kids in it. And here I am again. And as you can see, they're holding the newspaper. And here is what the class looks like. If you walked in, you see students working together in teams, not sitting in rows, because the idea is to teach collaboration. So it's in the top 10 schools in the world for innovation. In fact, it got number one. So this is, I'm trying to spread this philosophy worldwide. You don't have to produce a newspaper. You don't have to produce a magazine. You can use um, technology products. In other words, you can use innovation in tech to do the same thing, give people an opportunity to be innovative in all areas of the world. So I believe I give them the opportunity to believe in themselves by giving them control. And so this is an important quote for you to remember. The two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. Said by Mark Twain, this famous author who wrote Huckleberry Finn. 
And finding out why is understanding your passion in life. What are you interested in doing? What do you want to do to make the world better? And that when you know what you want to do and you work together with other people, because no one can do it alone, that is going to be the beginning of your opportunity to be innovative and believe in yourself. So I use trick in the classroom just to remind you, trust. You need to learn to trust yourself, trust your colleagues, trust your friends, and they need to put me together and you need to be together in a group where you respect each other, give each other independence, collaborate on ideas and in decisions and treat each other with kindness. It trust empowers the learner, encourages curiosity, encourages creativity, and you build trust in yourself. And also when you respect people, they respect themselves. Honestly, the most important thing people want in the world is respect. That's why they all wear very fancy clothes with labels that are very significant because they think that's going to give them respect. Independence, little children from the moment they're weaned are making their way toward independence. Stated by Maria Montessori, one of the most important educators in the last century. Collaboration, when students collaborate with each other, they learn the importance of collaboration. And if you go to a lecture with 500 people sitting in the lecture, you listen to the lecture, you get up at the end of the hour and go off and do your own thing, you're not learning to collaborate. And kindness, this is a famous quote from Maya Angelou, an American author. I've learned that people will forget what you said People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. So you just need to think about that from your own life, your own perspective, how you feel, or you remember that forever. I give students the opportunity to understand themselves, to discover their passion, and belief is a key driver, belief in yourself. Hopefully you'll have a copy of these slides. You'll be able to go back over them because I think I tried to put in these slides everything that I thought was important for young people to know. I put students in charge of the class. Oh, this is also really important. I always let them revise. No grade until they get an A. And so the grade pressure is off. They always revise and then they learn by revision that nobody does it perfectly the first time, nobody. And people like to make you think they did it perfectly right away, but it's not true. We all have to revise. And here's some examples of people who believed in themselves. This is Alejandro Ramirez, who uh, came into my class. He came from uh, Monterey, Mexico. He was in my class um, about five years ago. And then, um, unfortunately, he did not get into the college he wanted to get into, even though I wrote his recommendations. Um, that college was Stanford. And so he was very disappointed. And so what he did instead on my recommendation was to take that same rec and see if he could start a company on something that he cared about. And so he did, he found a friend, and he started this company called Nowports. And this is something he knew about. I knew nothing about shipping. He knows all about shipping because his dad was involved in it. So he started this company and um, today he is 24 years old and the company is $1.1 billion in evaluation. Um, he's just an example, one example out of many, but it's important for you to realize the power that you have that you might not even think about. This is Lisa Brennan Jobs, Steve Jobs' daughter, who's a journalist. She was in my class. Steve Jobs was a parent in my class, and I got to know him really well. Um, this is James Franco. He's a well-known actor. Uh, Eat, Pray, Love was one of his movies, 127 Hours, Spider-Man. And, you know, 
he was originally going to go to college and major in mathematics. And um, of course, his parents were thrilled with this. But then his second semester of his senior year, he decided he wanted to be an actor. You can imagine how his parents felt, felt about that. But that's what he decided he wanted to be, an actor. And you see he's very successful. And this is what he said. He wrote the introduction to my first book, Moonshots in Education. She showed me I could take my dreams as seriously as I wanted. I believed in him that he could definitely be an actor. And that made all the difference. This is Jeremy Lin, basketball player. He's also, he went to Harvard and he, I majored in, I forgot what he majored in, something academic, of course. But his goal was to be a basketball player. And even though he went to Harvard and did an academic major, this is what he really wanted to do. And so this was his dream and he succeeded in his dream. And he is today a basketball player. He played for the New York Nets, but um, today I don't know what team he is on. So these are of course famous people who believed in themselves. He, Elon Musk, we all know about what he did to believe in himself and believe in his ideas with Tesla and SpaceX. Steve believed in himself too. And as I said, I knew him very well. And I remember when he said he was gonna create a phone that everyone could keep in their pocket. You know, people thought he was nuts back then because we always, did, we used to sit at home waiting near our phone for someone to give us a phone call. That's what it used to be like. People didn't believe that he could do it. Larry and Sergey in Google, when they first started Google in 1998, you know, there must have been 20 other search engine companies out there, 20, or maybe even more. Every bit there were search, that was the number one thing. They Sergey is the one that came up with the algorithm. They basically believed in themselves and what they could do to change the world of search. And this is Warren Buffett. He's the number one investor, at least in the US, probably in the world. And if you read his history and the story of his life, he came up with his own method for investing and he did it, and as you can see, he did it really well, and he is the number one. So it's important to realize that people make lots of mistakes before they reach their goal. So what you want to do is if you don't do it right the first time, don't worry. Just do it again. Revision is the key. Whatever you believe about yourself on the inside is what you will manifest on the outside. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, if you want to contact me, try contacting me on LinkedIn. I'm very happy that I was able to do this presentation for you. And I wish you lots of luck in your whatever it is you're doing.